Greta here. Today we are going to talk about how to do camel pose ustrasana. Now the camel pose is one of the back bending which is uh, with the chest facing the sky. And a lot of people would cringe when they hear the name ustrasana simply because uh, to a lot of people it's not a comfortable shape. They feel that the lower back feels so painful. There's like so much pressure in that lower back. And some people, they say that they can't even breathe. Well, guess what? Me too. <laughs> I used to hate the pose. I mean, I didn't hate it. I never really hated it, but I was scared of it because I had experienced everything that uh, everyone has been, like a lot of people has been experiencing as well. Lower back, a lot of pressure didn't feel comfortable when I come back out, my lower back would ache, couldn't breathe. And the most important thing is, or was, was that when I came out of the shape, I would get so emotional that I would actually cry. And good thing was always like after Ustrasana, we come back out, we would go into child pose. So I'll be crying and nobody would notice. I don't know why, um, actually I, now I know, um, but I didn't know why then. So all those things like the physical, the emotional, mental aspect of it made Ustrasen just something that I didn't like. Not until recent years, like recent years, like in the past, I don't know, like seven years, I guess. Yeah, seven. Um, that I finally started to know how to make Ustrasen work for my body. So I'm just going to share it with you. A lot of people when they do camel pose because of the anatomy of the spine, the lumbar spine, the lower back is the most mobile. So, and when you look at the shape of camel, it's just like you just lean back, right? So that's what a lot of people do. And I did the same too. I just went, okay, I lean back and I place my hands on my heels and it's just gonna cringe and ooh, like you just wanna pray to the teacher that can you count a little bit faster? And then you're like, well, I can't count back out. You just kind of sink right back down to the heels, right? And then sometimes when you want to come back out, you'll be like shaking, you'll be like, Ugh, like that. So it's not a very comfortable shape. Going back to that uh, brief mentioning of that lumbar spine, the lower part of the spine, we call it the lumbar spine. This is the most mobile. This is supposed to, or aside from the neck, this part of the spine is the responsibility is to go back and to go forward. So that's why when we do back bending, we just tend to dump everything in that lower back. But then, as you know, that the spine is relatively long from here all the way up to the back of the neck. So what we actually want to do is to spread load instead of just dumping the entire weight on this part of the spine, why don't we do a little bit of this, like the, put a bit of uh, load onto the upper back as well. Now the upper back uh, thoracic spine is not too good at bending back and bending, bending forward is kind of good because it's kind of round, right? But it's the shoulders that do the work. Um, it's not too good about back bending simply because we have an entire rib cage attached to this part of the spine so that it doesn't feel too good or too mobile to move like this. And also um, the rib cage is to protect the heart and the lungs, so that's why um, it doesn't want to be too mobile. The upper part of the spine is good to turn, rotate. Neck, however, it's good, everything. Rotate by bending, forward folding. So, but then when we do back bending with the neck, Know, as a part of the teamwork, we also want to lengthen and not just toss the head back. All right. So what we are going to do is we are going to locate how the upper back should feel when we do the camel pose. We need a block. So what we want to do is we want to do kind of like a fish pose, except the block doesn't go behind the upper back. It goes a little bit further down. So as you can feel the rib cage. Uh, these two parts kind of stick out a little bit more prominently. This is where the block will go behind it. Okay? Trust me, it's not the most comfortable shape, but then after you get used to it, it becomes quite comfortable in a very uncomfortable way. So be gentle, start off you know, uh, low, 
and then you're just gonna start from sitting and you come down. Yes, it feels odd, as you can see. Okay, it's not in the upper back anymore, it's a little bit further down. So once I'm here, my butt needs to ground down. As you can see, the, these two parts of the rib cage tend to poke out. Okay, this is where the T12, thoracic spine 12, the 12 vertebra in the thoracic spine, and also the L1, which is the first vertebra in the lumbar spine. If you want to know anatomy, right here, okay? So once you are here, you can actually notice how your chest actually kind of lifts up a little bit as the shoulders are drawn down. So I'd like you to remember this feeling, okay? If you feel totally comfortable with it, try to go a little bit higher, but then it does feel quite different. So again, once you're here, you can see the entire upper back, the chest, tend to um, have a bit of back bend, right? Just stay here for a bit. Notice your butt still sink down. Once you are more familiar with, oh, about your upper back, not a lot of people are very familiar with the upper back. Um, we are going to start working on a camel. So when we work on camel, aside from the spine, we also need to notice we can actually move the pelvis and also feel the thighs working. So. Um, the back bend, even though the name is back bending, back means the entire back body. So make sure that you just don't use just one part of the uh, body to do all the work, but the entire body to do everything. So every pose is a teamwork. It just depends, you know, some poses have a, a, a more prominent leader, while other poses, they kind of share the same. For this one, um, aside from the upper and the lower back, we also want to feel the pelvis moving forward and the thighs, the front of your thighs also moving forward. Now what you want to do is you might want to just feel the front hips. Use your fingers and just place your hands around the hips. Your index and your middle finger would feel these bony parts right here, right? So feel it here. Imagine when we are doing camel, these two parts of uh, these two uh, this part of the body rather, wants to come forward as we lengthen your spine and lift the rib cage up to go back. So as you can see from this one, this kind of back bending that I'm doing is a um, more even curve, okay? Instead of just dumping the load here. And also the hips, if I just dump the load onto the lower back, as you can see the hips are moving back, rather if I to the entire spine, the, the, the option that I was doing just a little bit before, I was pressing the hips forward, lengthen the spine, and lift the chest up. So this is the thing that you actually want to do in a camel, just to share the load. So the load doesn't go all the way into the lower back, it's shared amongst the hips, thighs, upper back, and also the neck. Another reason why camel pose is so strainful in that lower back is because of the placement of the hands. We see when people doing camel pose, the hands are placed on the heels. So we kind of forget about everything. We just want to go here, okay? But then if you don't feel much in the thighs, you tend, you tend to collapse into that lower back and that's why it causes a lot of discomfort. So what you want to do is when you want to start in camel, have your hands on that lower back. Shoulders turn back, and then once you're here, the thumbs, which is placed right in the sacrum area, what I do is when I breathe in, I want to feel your thumbs, the thumbs, gently pressing the hips forward, and then I lift my rib cage. Remember that feeling with that block behind that awkward, pose awkward position in the body, that T12 and L1, I find that lift, I keep the thumbs pressing the pelvis, reminding that, hey, pelvis, don't go back, and I lengthen, okay? Lift the chest, and then maybe just look up at the sky. Notice that I just don't toss the head back like that, I keep it lifted. Pelvis forward, thighs working, upper back lifting, and I just stay here. I can even breathe and talk. Not too bad a feeling, and nothing come out of it. So this might give your entire body a 
brand new feeling about camo, about backbending. So feel free to spend a few more moments here. Now we are going to take it one step further. We are going to add blocks. So um, instead of having the hands going all the way to the heels, we want to have the hands on the block. So um, a little bit more space. We don't have to feel about dumping the weight all the way back into that lower back. So the uh, block will be placed just beside the outside of the ankle area on the highest setting. And then from here again, let's set up hands on that lower back. Okay, as you inhale, feel the thumbs reminding the hips to go forward, lengthen the spine, okay? Keeping the chest lifted. Imagine the chest wants to touch the ceiling and then all this time you wanna actually lean back. Lift and lean back, lift and lean back. Keeping that, you know, that muscular strength in you, that muscular support. And then when your hands are placed on the block, notice that the hands are light. You don't wanna dump the weight onto the blocks. You want to feel as if the hands could any time push the blocks away and the shape will not change at all. Maybe look at the sky. Take a breath. Thighs forward, hips forward, oops, chest up, and then come back down. So if stage one and two feel good to you, you're ready for stage three, which means the uh, hands to be placed on the heels. We'll just see how things are, um, you know, because this is still quite a big distance, quite a long distance. If you feel this from here all the way to the heels is too much for you, then maybe just, you know, put the block on a medium setting and try it again. And then after this feels okay, then aim for the heels. When we do this shape, it's exactly the same, all right? Don't think about the hands coming down to touch the heel. Don't think about this. Always think, oh, are my hips coming forward? Is my chest lifting? No, am I using that low back? Is my abdomen slightly engaging? No, when you go deeper into back bending, it always helps to slightly engage the lower abdomen, the rib cage hugging in a little bit, just to give you that extra support. All right, so let's give it a try. Feeling your thighs, the knees maybe hips a little apart. For me, they tend to go a little bit wider. Hands on that lower back. Shoulders back. Then on the inhale, lift the chest up. At the same time, your thumbs are gently reminding the hips to go forward, 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 forward. Thighs on the hugging. Keep the chest lifted, keep the chest lifted, keep the chest lifted. Lower abdomen hugging, rib cage hugging a little bit. For now, I'll be looking at the back. And then keep everything engaged, keep everything solid. If my hands actually touch the heels, they land softly. Once they do touch, I take this opportunity to push the heels away just to feel, give my body an extra lift. And just breathe here. Thighs wanting to hug in. Inside thighs, hips pressing forward, chest up. And then when I'm able, when I am ready to leave, I leave. Chest up and then down. So as you can see, even with my hands on the heels, on the feet, or maybe not touching the feet, the shape of my back bending, it never changed. So you have to rethink this way. If you think that once the hands um, land on the heels and they rest, then all the muscle engagement, all that awareness, all that consciousness, consciousness are immediately gone and just kind of dump the weight into that lower back and all the whole habits would come back in and that would not be a very good experience for your body. That's it for my sharing for today. Remember when you are in shapes like these kind of back bending, you always want to find that lift, that openness so you can breathe, okay? Take your time, give it a try and let me know how it goes. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. And also press on that little notification button so that whenever there is a video that comes up, you'll be the first to know. I'll see you again soon. Take it easy.